Background design often serves to answer a series of questions, ones we're not even aware of asking. Where are we? What's happening in the story now? Important concepts to consider, but I always find the most interesting backgrounds force me to ask questions. The minutia of detail inspires me to think about the greater world and my imagination rotates in more questions as I look for answers. This scene has always stood out to me because of how the characters are immersed in their environment. I love how the tree hides the mammoth and reveals it step by step to the dog and to us. And through the simple vignette from the wonderful short Adam and Dog, it introduces the very simple concept that we are just passing through our environments. Which leads me to my question. How do you decide the look and the feel of your environment? I'm not going to talk about layout and staging here, but rather imparting the conceptual focus of a background into animation. Or even to take that deeper, how we can use the background as subtext to enhance a story. Often we take reference from the real world, as a lot of contemporary animation does. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some beautiful, enriching, and wonderful films that do this. In fact, I'm always blown away by the attention to detail here in Shinkai's Garden of Words. Others go incredibly stylized and abstract. Or, just remove the focus from the background completely, letting our preconceptions fill it in. To me, background design is a chance to explore and impart an artistic vision. For our animation, we can study the real world, or as artists, we can look at the work of those who have already studied line, shape, colour, texture and form. Art is all around us. Here is where I want to talk about Tom Moore's work. The approach and forethought in Moore's work is so refreshing because he delves deeper into a story than just where the characters are going and what they're facing. All of the animation is concentrated on telling a story. Experiencing Moore's work, I'm always drawn in by the flattened perspective of the world they've built. Now, Moore isn't the first artist to use flat 2D shapes. Animators like Mark Baker have been pioneering this look throughout their work. Their worlds feel safe, like a child's pop-up book. And of course Baker developed this feel into his contemporary work. But I think Moore takes this a step deeper. For instance, how could looking at medieval art inspire a visual for film? Realism isn't the focus here, symbolism is. So distinct and correct proportions aren't essential as it's the representation that matters. We only used uh, perspective when it was a danger. So we made it that in this world, when it's like a medieval tapestry or a stained glass window, you're safe. But when there's less colors and perspective, true perspective, then you're in danger. And so almost like the way a musical score can control the audience's feelings, we hoped that we could use the color and the visual language to control how the audience felt. It holds true across his films, and the rich, inventive background design allows us to either take deep breaths or hold them. In a small decision, they forego a rule of animation and subvert true perspective. In fact, Moore's first feature, The Secret of Kells, takes a deeper dive into its subject matter and allows him to experiment with the layout the characters move through which is inspired from the Book of Kells, which in turn inspire a young Brendan for his future work. While Moore and his team draw inspiration from medieval art, 
Its compositions are drawn from contemporary art rather than other animation. And so I'm going to see, like, Adrian Merjo was the art director on that, where I would have been looking at Irish art or, or rock carvings and stuff. He was looking at modern artists and he was really influenced by artists like Clean Kabinsky. And he brought that influence in and kind of added it to the pot and stirred it up. By looking at these different artists and their life's work, they can view the backgrounds of their animation with a rich tapestry of reference and embed a subtext within the visual language of their work. This leads me to my second thought. Often the visual language of animation is developed from the character design and parts of the structured backgrounds. For instance, how a castle appears to give you a good indication of whether its inhabitants appear good, evil, or just insecure. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? <laughs> Other times, the filmmakers can take it further. I especially like trolls. Its scrapbook aesthetic is open for all to see. Even the design of the creatures and the micro world they inhabit feels safe, despite the inherent dangers. Moore's work is rooted in cultural language, inspired by Miyazaki's My Neighbor Totoro and Spirit of the Way, William's Thief and the Cobbler, and even the Keshkemet film studio in Hungary. The language that we choose to tell the stories with is more like a language of illustration or painting, so it makes sense that the final look would have that organic look to it. There isn't a moment in his work where the visual language of the story isn't on display. He uses every inch of his moving tapestry to enhance the core of the story he's trying to tell. I don't feel like a frame is wasted. The backgrounds in his work aren't just there as a need to place the character somewhere. 2D for me is, is, a, is a language, you know. Um, it's a way to, to express and to, and to draw and to think. And, uh, I, and we've kind of, as I said, we kind of evolved that style over so long that it's kind of become a natural way. The story and the style go hand in hand. I think those who work in the medium understand its potential, and as 3D is focusing on the world becoming more true to life, 2D stands as a more experimental genre. Not just in a background design or character design, but how the worlds blend, or don't. And that's where I think animation has an advantage over live action in the sense that we can really use the whole um, language of visual art all the way from absolute abstraction to fully figurative and we don't need to um, make excuses like oh it's just a dream or something like that you know it, it's it's organically we can move in the way we tell the story um, through lots of layers of different types of abstraction. A background should be more than just a location to facilitate a scene. As I said at the start the most interesting worlds to me are the ones that force me to ask questions or think about where the characters are in new and interesting ways. Like a painting in a gallery, the more we look at it and drink it in, the more we can understand the artist's intent and appreciate their work. Remember, film is a visual medium. If all we focus on is getting a character from point A to B and not use our design elements to tell a deeper story, then we may as well just write a book. But if a story has already been told by the composition and the colour before a character even opens their mouth or moved, then it can only strengthen your work. Dive in, look a little deeper than the surface and create a world with more than two dimensions. Dad! What?